Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Snow down here, so we, we didn't get any up there. So, you know, we're hot, we usually get it. If we're gonna get it, but uh, let's pray, Father. Thank you for your word, thank you for loving us and just being so kind to us, and just for your faithfulness, Father. As I see snow, I always remember that that as the rain falls and the snow comes down, so so will your word not return void but accomplish what you set it out to. And thank you for your little promises. And, and your little encouragements, and so we thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus. So, do you know what today is? Today is the greatest day of your life. Right? Every day is. <laughs> Every day is. Yeah, so today, we, we, only, we only get one day. You know what day that is? Today, right? Okay. Like in the in the day they they have a saying. It's the, the only day was yesterday. The easy day was yesterday, <laughs> and so. But if we're focused on yesterday, or we're focused on the future, we we can lose track of where we are right here, right now, today. Right? The Bible says He's an ever future help in time of trouble. <laughs> ever what? <laughs> He's the ever past help in time of trouble. He's the ever present help in the time of trouble, right? So, so we can depend on him and we can trust him and we know that he's with us. So, so um, we know today is the best day of your life, right? One of my mentors always says that. He's like, today is the best day of your life. And I was like, dude, what's going to happen today? Like, why is that? And then finally, it finally hit me. Wait a second. Today is my day, right? Because today is the day that I know I have, that I'm here, that I know that, that I can deal with, right? Jesus said in Matthew, he said, said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got enough worries of itself, right? But, but so what's he saying? Live in today. Live where you are right here, right now, and trust him where, where he's at. And so we can trust that. I was... Um, <clears throat> We've been going through Romans. You guys remember Romans? Yeah. So Romans chapter one is about indulgence. Romans chapter two was about comparison. Romans chapter three was about saving yourself, right? And so we all know that there's no way that we can save ourselves, right? So we needed Jesus and we needed him to do something in, in our in our lives, right? And so... So as as um, I was just praying about, well, what comes next? Because we know in chapter four, it's going to kind of put a put a what do you call that? A bow, wrap a bow on it. Because it's really what it all comes down to, and what we do in, in between our spirit and our and our flesh. So um, I'm going to start in Romans. I'm going to go back to Romans three and start in twenty one and go down. And then I'm going to hit Romans 4, but it's so rich. And um, like, I know you ever read the Gospels and it's like Paul's repeating himself. Or like the story's repeating itself. And it's like you see the same, the same story through the entire scripture. What is that? Because that's the whole point of it. It's about God with us, Christ in us, the hope of glory and what God, a gracious, good God, went to have a relationship with us and about a finished work that only God could do. Let's let's remember this. Anybody remember the woman at the well? Just watch that. Yeah. So here we have a woman at the well, right? She she's coming up, and it, and we just say it's a well, but it was actually Jacob's well. Now, what's Jacob's well? Well, you see, Jacob. After his deal with with um, wrestling an angel, and after he reconciles with Esau, he goes to a place called Shechem. And the Bible Bible says that that 
he could he bought a piece of land within eyesight of Shechem for a hundred pieces of silver as in Genesis 33, right? And so that's where Jacob's well is. And if you go to go to um, Israel today, you will see that well, right? In fact, they have uh, a um, <clears throat> what do you call it? A church built over it. And that wasn't the first church. They've had like three churches built over it, and then it gets torn down, and then they build another church. But if you go into this building, you can actually go and draw water out of the very well that, that she was at. And so um, that well is 151 feet deep. Now think about that. That well has been there for generations and for generations. And wells were really important back in Israel in that day. Why do you think wells were important? <laughs> for water. For water, right? Why, why, like they didn't have like all the rivers and stuff that, that we have or were blessed with in the, in the Northwest, right? And they'd have dry seasons and they'd have drought. So it was really important to have a well that never went dry. And so they had a well, like if you see videos of, of them drawing water out of that well today, they have like this little ring thing that goes like this and they drop it. It drops like where you pour water into it and it goes way down the floor. But as it's coming up, it's a deep well. It's like, it's like in an aquifer. And so it's like, it never dries up for centuries after centuries. Right. And so what, what the shepherds would do, there would be wells all over the place. And like, like I know this one, one rabbi, would go hang out with the Bedouins. And so he would go with them in the into their um where they would take care of their sheep in the wilderness. And they had wells. And in these wells, um, they'd bring their sheep to it and then say, okay, get a drink, sheep. No, do you know what they had to do? They had a rope with a bucket on it, and then they would dump, they drop the bucket down, and then there's little they didn't have buckets so they had stones and they had the stones hewn and so where it was like a trough and so as the sheep would come around boy they they drop the drop the water into the well and then they'd pull it out with what with the bucket right and then they would water the sheep without the shepherd the sheep would die without the shepherd putting his bucket down and bringing up the water, they had no hope. There was no way that they could save themselves. They needed a shepherd. So here, this sets it, us up for, for in, in, let's go to John chapter four real quick. I want to read this to you because I feel really, can I take a detour real quick? Yeah. You got right good now. at that? I'll get through Romans three eventually, I promise. Markets, so I don't lose that. Okay, the Pharisees heard Jesus was gate was gain heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. I'm in John four, and then I'll go back to Romans four. So you might want to mark that. So John chapter four verse one. Some people actually read. <laughs> I like you. Yeah, everybody does. So good. You guys got me? Mm -hmm. You guys with me? Okay, so we're in John chapter 4, verse 1. It says, The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the, when the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more. Now he, now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to, to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph, or Joseph, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tired, and Jesus tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. So here, here Jesus is going, and if you know where Shechem is, it, it's called Sikor here, but it was actually the ancient city uh, of Shechem. We know because he's talking about the land that he gave to Joseph and, <laughs> and Jacob's well. So we know where it's at. And so, so here he's going up there. It's about 41 miles. I think it was 41 or 47 miles from, from Jerusalem. So it's a track, man. So it's not like, and it's not just like flat. 
like it's just not not like Kansas or Western Oklahoma, you know, where you can like see, like you can see Colorado almost, right. you know, or or the Panhandle of Texas or whatever, right? You you don't necessarily it's up hills and down hills and through valleys and it's desert and it's hot and it's dry. And so he made this trek, right? And here he's going and it's a well-known place. Why? Get it? A well-known oh. place, right? It's a well-known place Why? because it's a place where people could drink and it was enough of a reservoir that people could get water from it. And so they, he knew, hey, if I go to this well, yeah, guess what I'm guess what I'm going to get? I'm going to get water. And it probably wasn't just this woman coming to get water from this well. The women would have these like pottery things that went like this and they would carry it on their head and they would have to walk. Now Shechem, it said Shechem was, or this town, Sikar, it, you could, it was an eyesight from this, right? You could see it from the old Shechem. So like, you, you don't know how long she had to walk. But these women every day, in order, like we we take it for granted, <laughs> like we get the most valuable resource. And if you get lost in the wilderness, do you know what you're going to go looking for? Water. Water. You know what you need? Water, fire, shelter. And then you can get your food, right? In that order, pretty much, right? So if you don't have water, you're going to die, right? It's it's more of a priority than than, than fire, right? Because if you can't get food, can't drink water. You can live a long time without eating, but you can't live very long without drinking. Like it's our most precious resource. So here every day, like we think, well, man, I go, you know, I go and I can turn on a spigot. You know what water pours out? Like I go to the bathroom now and all I do is hold my hand under, you know, by the sink, you know, and <laughs> water comes on. Man, how that? They literally every day. They had to get this water, and it was a valuable commodity. It was something they had to do. It took them work to get that water. It took, took effort for them to get something that's so basic for us right now. And we're, oh, they're at the well. Well, they're just thirsty. Like You don't realize that that was their sustenance. That was their source. Without that, they would not have made it, right? And so here, here they're going... Here, here she's going to this well and she's carrying the water and it's not like she just popped up there one day. She did that every day, right? And by coincidence, Jesus just happened to be there. <laughs> Thirsty too, right? It's just coincidence, no. right? No. no. <laughs> do, you, do you know You know, in the Hebrew language, there's no such thing as coincidence? So, so you know that she had an appointment. She's looking for water that sustains her in the flesh. But Jesus is getting ready to do something inside her that's way bigger than just what she can see here, taste, touch, or smell. He's like, like I'm just not going to give you the life-giving um, sustenance for your flesh, but I'm getting ready to give you something that's going to change your life forever, right? And so it says... Jesus was tired, at, 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 and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. By the way, when you go, that is the one place that they can pinpoint where, where you have Jacob there, where you can definitely know that Jesus was actually at that place. Of all the places that they can pinpoint exactly, that they know where Jesus was, that's one place that they have marked that they know now. It's actually in the West Bank right now, so it's kind of hard to get to sometimes, but they still take tours over there, so it's real cool. Um, if you ever get a chance to do that, I would do that. But, but here he says this, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, now this isn't even a Jewish woman. I mean, she's part Jewish, right? She, she's a Samaritan, right? She, they considered them dogs, man. They considered them not whole, not, 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 um, not even worth talking to, let alone giving them a drink. It says this, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Okay, time out. Here, here's this, here's this woman who most, most Jewish people, whether a man or a woman, would not even give her the time of day. 
they, they'd probably walk by her like she was nothing, like, or look down on her when they did look at her. And now here's Jesus. He's sitting at the, at the well. He's tired. He's thirsty. And he's looking at her. And she's not even who, someone who would be talked to. And he's looking at her like, hey, will you give me something to drink? She's like, you talking to me? Yeah. Who, who's he talking to? I, I don't know who he's talking to. Like, like if I'd have been her, I'd be, get your own stinking drink. <laughs> uh, like, I know how you guys treat me. I know how you guys talk to me. I know how, right? And um, it says his disciples had gone into town to buy food. So this tells you that they were having to walk out of town to get to this place, right? The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans, right? She's like, how can you ask me for a drink? Like, in fact, how can you talk to me? Like, how, what makes you think that you can ask me for a drink, buddy? I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew. What are we talking about here? They were used to comparison. They were used to judging. They were used to, to saving themselves and all the things that we do in the flesh. And so maybe she thought she wasn't as good or maybe she thought that the, the Jews looked at her and thought she wasn't as good. Or maybe she looked at the Jews and thought they were just arrogant and she was better than them. Or maybe the Jews felt like in their heart, well, I'm not as good as even a Samaritan. You never know what's going on in people's hearts and minds or what, what's going on inside a person. But Jesus always cut to the chase. And so here... He, he gets her attention by asking her a question. And here's what's really cool is this is someone that wouldn't be associated. This is someone that now, if, we, if it was between Christians and, and people out in the world, we'd be like, yeah, I ain't going to talk to them. I'm going to be separate. I'm, I'm going to separate myself and be holy. Like, you ever heard that? <laughs> like, we get into these these places where we forget that it's the Samaritans that Jesus died for too. It, it's, it's the lost. It's the ones that, that we don't agree with, the ones that, that we don't have anything in common with, the ones who are out there seeking Jesus, and they don't even know they're seeking him, whether they're seeking him through indulgences with, with the flesh in any way, whether it be drugs or alcohol or all kinds of different things. What they're really looking for is Jesus. What they're really looking for is something that will, will fulfill them on the inside and fill a hole yeah. that they think they have because they haven't allowed Jesus to awaken in them. Really, Jesus has died for them. He's already there, but they haven't recognized that he rose again too. And therefore, they're just setting like they're in a coffin in their heart, needing a resurrection. Some believers are like that too, because we forget where we come from. We forget what Jesus done for us, and we forget that we can't save ourselves. Only he can. So here's this woman. Jesus is making room for him. Jesus is saying, you know what? I, I, my, my, my sacrifice is going to take care of everybody, Jew and Gentile. There's neither Jew nor Greek, right? There's all there is, it's a level ground, and we're all saved by grace and joint heir with Jesus because of his sacrifice. And so Jesus wanted to make it. I got an open door policy for, for the least, the lost, and the most unlikely. We look at people and think, oh, remember King David? Man, he smelled like sheep everywhere he goes in. You ever been around? They stink, man. They stink and they're dumb. Like they're dumber than a box of rocks. Like, like, like um, so, so, um, King David's here and nobody even saw the king in him until God told Samuel. There's another one. And he didn't even get in part, invited to the party. 
But you know what? He's the one that I chose. You know why? Because man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. Sometimes we get caught up looking at appearances, looking at, at this or look at that. What are they wearing? What are they doing? How many people are with them? How many people are with that? Jesus had multitudes with him, and by the time he died, he didn't have anybody, right? But in the midst of it, God did something great. Don't get caught up in what your eyes see and what your ears hear. Let God do a work in your heart because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, right? God does things different. He said, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts and not. Right? So he's like, as the earth is higher, or heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. What's he saying? Trust me. Trust in the Lord with your mind, with your brain, with all your brain, with all your eyes, with all your ears, with all your feeling. Trust in the Lord with what? With your heart. Trust in the Lord with your heart. And lean not on what? On your brain, on your thinking, on your senses, on what? Trust him. Trust what he says. Trust what he's doing in your life. And here, the Samaritan woman, she's got a rough past, man. Like, like she wouldn't be a, a, invited to speak at the women's auxiliary meeting. Like, like she might not even be invited to many churches, like to even give her testimony. She might not even like it PTA. You can forget that. And she definitely couldn't run for office. She had a history. Not only was she a Samaritan, but she had a past that nobody wanted to deal with. Now think about that. Hold on, I got it. She had a past that nobody wanted to deal with. And here Jesus is showing up. Here Jesus comes. And he's like, whew, man, I'm thirsty. Can you give me a drink? And she's got to be thinking, how can I give anything to anybody else? Because I am bankrupt. I have nothing to offer. In fact, I've offered this to so many men, and they didn't want. I've been married five times, and the guy I'm with now, he, I'm not even married to. How can you even be talking to me? I'm not even just a Samaritan, but I'm probably on the lowest rung of Samaritans. But Jesus had a different look. Jesus has a different view. Jesus has a different heart if we will just trust him. If we can start seeing people through his eyes and not our own, start seeing people as what he did for them, I would like to say I look at people as those who know Jesus and those that are getting ready to. Then I have no way of judging them. All I can do is love them. We don't always like what, what people do. I don't even like what I do about the time. I mean, but I tell you one thing, Jesus still loved me. And I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And Jesus still died for those people that we might not normally look at in a certain way. Now here, here is Jesus is going. He's saying, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. You know what he's doing? He's setting her up. He is setting her up. He's like, like hey, you know, one of my mentors, he, he's um, one of the greatest people I ever met, but he's probably the best evangelist I've ever been around. He's a pastor too, but he he's a he's a cutting horse trainer, a legend in the sport. And so we were in Fort Worth at Bronx with him and his wife and Linda was with me and we just got done with the cutting and he was watching his sons and his grandsons. And so we're at Bronx and we get our ice cream and and me and Linda and Gloria walk out and then Sonny's still in there. And we're like, I didn't or did they not give us ice cream? What happened? And we walk in there, and he has two girls that were behind the corner. Now they're setting out a booth, and he's leading them to Jesus. And they're just sitting there sobbing. 
And we're like, what happened? And he's like, Jesus happened. What do you think, boy? You know, Jesus happened. Like, it happens everywhere. You know, everywhere he went, he sneezes and three people get saved, right? But I was like, and, and he's just a lovable, you know, character, man. He's a real character. Like, we were at a barbecue one time, barbecue place. We are coming back from a men's conference, and I was sitting down at the table, and this guy was sat by me. He got up to go get get something, and and um, when he when he he talks to Sonny, when he gets back, he's just looking at me weird. He starts sliding down. And and so I was like, so how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. He's like, and he's like, so how long did, were you in prison for murder? <laughs> and you just got out? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, he told me that you just got out of prison for murder and not to talk very mean around you because you might kill me, you know? And so I was like, but he's just kind of like that. Just a fun, loving guy, right? And so Linda and and um, her friend went down to hear a speaker and, and um, they were taking him back to the airport. So they're sitting at this restaurant and um, there's Sonny and his wife and, and several, I think, I think um, several other women with them. And then, and then Linda and her friend and um, this waiter comes back and says, says to me, he's like, man, he goes, how did you get so lucky to, sat around all these women and at your same table and he said, boy, I'll tell you what, pays to be Mormon. <laughs> you know, just just a joker, a funny guy like that. For Mormon, sorry, not trying to tease you, right? But he's just a funny guy, right? And if you're a murderer, I'm sorry too. Right? So, but the the point is, is is um Sonny's in here and uh, and um he went up to the counter and he's getting his ice cream. He goes, hey, wait a second. He goes, you guys ever think, I got a question for you. And they're like, what? And he's like, do you know how big the word if is? If. They're like, it's like two letters. And he's like, no, no. He's like, do you know how big that word if is? They're like, no, we don't, we don't know how big. How, how big is it? And he said, let me give you an example. If I hadn't started drinking, when I was eight years old and become an alcoholic, my life would have turned out way better. But that's just an example. He said, I got another hint for you. He said, if you died today, would you have known Jesus? And they both just dropped and started crying and ended up leaving to Jesus. You see, we were there for ice cream. But in the midst of it, he had something. They had ice cream to give, but he had living water. He had something real. And he wasn't afraid to share it. So here's Jesus, right? And Jesus is Jesus is like, um, he is living water. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the water. He is the truth. The Bible talks about out of our belly will flow rivers rivers of living water we have a source that is within us there's a river of life flowing out of me it makes the lame to walk and the blind to see do anybody remember that song i'd sing it but you guys would <laughs> get upset you guys would cry right i got a river of life flowing out of me then spring up a well goose 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 deep in my soul a river of life, man. You got living water. And his name is Jesus. And that's what she's trying to tell him. You think that I'm just after something in the physical, but I'm getting ready to give you something that will change you for eternity. I am that living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and, and the well is deep. In fact, it was 151 feet or so deep. That's deep. It's like, you ain't got nothing to draw from, buddy. How are you going to get the water? Where can you get this living water? She's like, wow, I want this. Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well? And drank from it himself, as did all his sons and his herds and his flocks and his herds. And Jesus answered, everyone 
who drinks this water will be thirsty again. You know what he's saying? If you're trying to get your sustenance from the flesh, you're going to always need more. It's always, it's a never ending cycle. It's never going to satisfy. You're always going to be thirsty. You're never going to have enough time. You're never going to have enough, enough money. You're never going to have enough cars or houses or peace or right. anything like that. But in Jesus, he is our peace. And in him, we have all things. Like we're, we're heirs to everything Abraham had. Now, listen to this. And I'm not just talking physical. I'm talking about the promise. Stuff inside that you can't. There's stuff that money cannot buy. Peace. Hope, love, right? You can buy the physical parts of it, but you can't buy the inward parts of it. It only comes from one, one, one person, and that's Jesus, right? And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You know what I'm saying? Spring up a well. Goose, 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 goose. <laughs> Deep in her soul. Spring up a well. Goose, 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 goose. And make me whole. Makes the lame to walk. Makes the blind to see. Makes the deaf to hear. Not just physically spiritually do it's living water it's good water if they bottled that man it'd be invaluable but guess what it's free the woman said to him sir give me this water so that i won't get thirsty and have to come keep coming here to draw water i love this lady she's like dude you got running water. She's ahead of her time. Like, I can get running water that's piped right into my house, piped right into me. And I don't ever have, I don't have to walk. Like, I'm tired of carrying this thing on my head. I'm tired of walking in the dirt and the cold and the hot and everything else just to get water. I want this living eternal water that never makes me thirst again. And do you know what Jesus said to her? Sorry, you're going to have to wait a couple thousand years. Because they don't have plumbing, at least. I mean, they kind of had plumbing in Rome, but it was a little different. No. Jesus didn't tell her that. He told her, go call your husband and come back. Time out. Now, <laughs> Jesus already knew she didn't have no husband. It was, it was, a, it was a trick. It wasn't a trick. It was a setup. Because Jesus was wanting to get something into her that was obviously something that she was dealing with that she was shamed about and we got these things that happen to us and we carry them with us and and sometimes we carry bad of honor but sometimes we carry the shame and the hurt and the disappointment and we think that that what we did is who we are and it's not and jesus is getting ready to set her free he's like i'm gonna my living water is gonna set you free from your past your sins, I will never remember again. He says, I cast them to the depths of the sea. As far as the east is from the west, I don't remember them no more. You do. And half of what you remember is not right about them. Because only 50% of what we remember is right anyway. But we hang on to those things. And that's what she was doing. And Jesus was getting ready to set her free. Jesus said this. You're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you, are, you, you now have is not your husband. What you, have said, what you have said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that this place where we must worship, but that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. 
We worship what we do know for the salva for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and now it and now has come. What's now? Today. And now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, not in Jerusalem, not in Samaria, not in the place where people traditionally worship. But he says a real worship, it's going to come from the inside of us. It's going to come from our heart, from the inside out. He said, in our spirit, those who worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. He said, look, you don't have to find the indulgences of the world. You don't have to live in comparison and you don't have to save yourself seeking for living wa for water because I am living water. Indulge in me, live in me. Compare yourself as me, as he is, so am I in this world. We are seated with Christ where? In heavenly places. That wasn't free. It's free to us, but it wasn't free to him. It was paid for. Yet a time is coming and now it's to come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Man. I kind of looking on the outside. I'm looking on the inside. Find that living water in me and watch what I will do. It says God is spirit. God is what? God is spirit? Really? I didn't know that. Anybody else know that? Because it's just like new to me. God is spirit. And his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. You know what he's talking about? The Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. We need the letter. We need the word. But there's a lot more depth to it than just the letter. If you do not perceive it as through spiritual eyes and without the help of the Holy Spirit, you can turn it into a legalistic tool to beat people up. The guy's like, spirit and truth. And guess who truth is? It's Jesus. It's a person, right? And said, I know not. She said, the woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. He is. He's right there with you. He's talking to you. That Messiah you're waiting for to come again, he's right there. He's talking to you and giving you exactly what you're saying. Did you declare it? I who speak to you am he. Whoa. Can you imagine? Not only is he talking to a Jew, she's talking to the Messiah, the one she's waiting for. And then just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman, not let alone a Samaritan. Then no one asked, what do you want and why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water job, the woman went back to town and said to the people, she left her water. It's like, I don't even need this stuff no more. I found Jesus. And do you know what happened? Sparked a, a revival, sparked a renewal, sparked a revolution. And look what happened. Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way towards, towards him. Meanwhile, the disciples learned him, Rabbi, eat some. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing of. And so I'm going to I'm going to shut off here it can go on. Jesus always trying to tell him. Always trying to say, look, it's not about what you see, hear, taste, touch, or smell. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And start seeing it. 
I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Goose, goose, goose. I know why it's goose, 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 like I'm milking a cow. <laughs> but it should be goose, 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 flow, right? That's better, right? It'll make you all, make the lame to, to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. And if you're not careful, he will set you free and change your life. Amen. Amen. Out there, you don't know Jesus, real simple. He'll make you alive. Damn thirsty. He said, you know what? I got you. Just trust me. Say, Father, for, forgive me. I trust you, Jesus. Give me that living water. I'll follow you. Thank you for saving me and giving me new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.